We're going to finish up this very short unit on cellular respiration with the last couple things that happen during the process. So up to this point, we've really talked about two things. We've talked about this glycolysis that occurs, right? And glycolysis is extremely important because glucose is a six carbon molecule, which is too big really to be done anything with in the cell. So it's first broken down into two three carbon molecules called pyruvate. And that does not need oxygen. That step happens without oxygen. So at this point, oxygen has not been used. Glycolysis breaks it down into pyruvate. And then we talked about this idea of fermentation. And fermentation is what occurs when there's no oxygen present. And fermentation is a process that happens in bacteria and in yeast. And in our cells as well, we have, there's two types of lactic acid fermentation and there's alcoholic fermentation. We do not go through alcoholic fermentation, but our muscles can go through lactic acid fermentation. And what that does is it provides you with a small amount of energy when there's no oxygen present. But as I said in that lecture, it is not enough to live off of. If we didn't have mitochondria and we just went through fermentation and glycolysis, we would never have been able to survive. We would not have gotten this far. But because we are so well evolved and we're, you know, we're so complex, thankfully nature came up with a solution and there's a process that actually allows you to produce a lot of ATP. And that is this process called aerobic respiration. And aerobic means it uses oxygen. So this is what happens when oxygen is present. So glycolysis occurs, gl uh, glucose is broken down into pyruvate, and at this point, the pyruvate is then gonna move into the mitochondria. And this is this process called um, cellular respiration and specifically aerobic cellular respiration. So this is an aerobic reaction, which means oxygen is needed. And the next step is called the Krebs cycle. So just, I'm gonna skip ahead a couple slides. I'll come back to this. But this diagram here shows you what's going on. So in the first step up to this point, outside of the mitochondria, we have glycolysis. And this does not require oxygen. It does make a little bit of ATP, as I said before, but not enough to survive off of. So if we wanna be able to function the way we do, this pyruvate goes into the mitochondria. And there it has two different steps. This should look familiar to you. This hopefully looks kind of like the last unit with photosynthesis where we had the Calvin cycle and we had the um, light reactions, right? Well, this is the same idea. We have a battery charger, but instead of having a sugar maker, we have an energy maker. So the Krebs cycle is the first part of this process and it is the battery charger. And then the second part of this process is this thing called the electron transport chain. And that is the actual energy maker. But let's go back. So this first stop part of the process is called the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle. It was first discovered by a gentleman named Hans Krebs. That's why it's called the Krebs cycle. But this happens in the mitochondria. So just a quick refresher on the mitochondria. The mitochondria actually has two membranes. It has an inner membrane called the cristae, it has the outer membrane, and then it has this liquid in the middle called the matrix. And the matrix is a fluid center where this process occurs. So if you look at this, uh, this would be mitochondria. We have our outer membrane, but then we have this inner membrane here, which is called the cristae, and then we have this fluid on the inside, which is called the matrix. So the matrix is in the middle, in the liquid in the middle. We have our cristae, which is gonna be this inner membrane, and then we have the outer membrane. The Krebs cycle, the thing that I'm talking about right now, that happens in this liquid portion. It happens in the matrix. So let's talk about it. So again, named after Hans Krebs, and this happens in the matrix of the mitochondria, so in that fluid portion in the middle. What happens in this process? Well, it's a very complex process, which I'm not gonna go into detail on. What I want you to know is that it's the battery charger. So what am I talking about? Well, here's what happens. The pyruvic acid from glycolysis, so glycolysis occurs and it becomes pyruvic acid, which is that three carbon molecule. It is then converted into a molecule called acetyl CoA. It's an enzyme. And the reason why I'm including this is just the idea that this does use enzymes. And the enzymes are what make this process go. And that's why when your temperature goes too high or too low, this process stops. So acetyl CoA then enters the Krebs cycle and it's really broken down. And as it gets broken down, as this molecule gets broken down, it releases carbon dioxide. So it gives off carbon dioxide as a byproduct. So when you breathe in, you breathe in oxygen and then you breathe out carbon dioxide. This is why you breathe out carbon dioxide. It happens during this step. 
So what ends up happening, and that's what we exhale, is you give off that carbon dioxide. But in the process of doing this, the, the actual breakdown of the carbon is what makes this process go. So this is an image of the process. You do not need to know this, but this is the pyruvic acid going in. It gets converted to acetyl-CoA, and then it joins this thing called the citric acid cycle, where it's a six carbon sugar again, and it slowly gets broken down. It loses carbon until it gets back to its original form. But in the process, what it does is it charges batteries. It charges NAD into NADH. It charges a molecule called FAD into FADH2, and it charges ADP into ATP. So the whole point of this process of the Krebs cycle is it's the battery charger. It charges the batteries so they can be used in the next process. So the Krebs cycle converts the dead batteries, which are NAD, FAD, and ADP, into what we call charged batteries, NADH, FADH2, and ATP. Now those get used in the last step to produce the energy. So what would happen if the Krebs cycle stopped working? The entire system would shut down. It's the same thing that would happen if the light reactions stopped working in photosynthesis. The, the Calvin cycle would not have the energy it needs to make sugar. Well, if the Krebs cycle stopped working, then the electron transport chain would not have the energy it needs to make energy, if that makes any sense. It doesn't have the tools it needs to make the energy. So that's the Krebs cycle. The electron transport chain, or the ETC, that is something that happens last. And this happens, we take the high energy electrons from the charge batteries. So we have these charge batteries, NAD, FAD, uh, NADH, FADH2, and ADP, ATP. And it uses that energy to take ADP and convert it to ATP. And this happens along the inner membrane of the mitochondria. This happens in that cristae. But basically, the energy from the charge batteries converts ADP into ATP. I'm not going to go into detail on how that happens. All you need to know is that the charged batteries from the Krebs cycle provides the electron transport chain with what it needs to make ATP. So if I go back to my diagram here, you can see. The Krebs cycle provides the batteries, the NADH and the FADH2, to make the electron transport chain run. And that's what produces all of this ATP. And it makes a lot. It makes a lot of ATP. So let's just finish up with how much it makes. So what's the final outcome here? Well, the final outcome is we get a total of 36 ATP. Sorry. We get a total of 36 ATP. I don't know if you can see that at the bottom, it adds up to 36. There's two that gets made during glycolysis, and then each one of these batteries provides the energy to make all of this ATP at the end. So basically, um, for one molecule of glucose, you get 36 ATP out of this process because it goes through the whole thing twice because each glucose is broken into two pyruvic acids. Now, one thing I wanna point out to you, Anaerobic respiration only makes two ATP. So let's just take a look at this diagram real quick just to review it. So basically, glucose and oxygen come in to the cell from the blood. That glycolysis process breaks the glucose into two pyruvates, two three-carbon pyruvates, right? That pyruvate then has two options. If oxygen is present, it's going to go into the mitochondria and it's going to produce ATP it's gonna produce 36 ATP. So for every glucose that goes in, we get 36 ATP out on this end. For anaerobic respiration, this would be if there was no oxygen present. The pyruvate can go that direction, but for this, for fermentation, we have lactic acid and alcoholic, they each only produce two ATP. So if you're gonna have glucose get broken down by a process, you wanna make as much energy as possible, right? So that's going to be, ideally, your mitochondria is going to produce all this usable ATP. You're going to get 36 ATP, and it's enough to keep you going. But if your mitochondria are not working or you don't have oxygen, you can produce a little bit of ATP through lactic acid fermentation. However, it is not enough to survive off of. Okay, last thing here. And to finish up here, uh, let's just look at these two equations. Cell respiration and photosynthesis. If you look at cellular respiration, the equation is six water plus six carbon dioxide plus sunlight, energy from sunlight, is gonna produce glucose 
and oxygen. The whole point of this process is to produce glucose. The oxygen is just a byproduct. Now let's look at cell respiration. Cell respiration, we have glucose and oxygen going in. And then what do you get as your byproducts, as your outcome? You get six water, six carbon dioxide, and the whole point of this is to make ATP. Now one thing I hope you can see here is that these two processes are actually opposites of each other. The reactants of photosynthesis are the products of cell respiration, and the products of photosynthesis are the reactants of cell respiration. So what ends up happening is photosynthesis produces glucose and oxygen, and then the glucose and oxygen go through cell respiration, which produces the water and carbon dioxide, which then goes back into photosynthesis. So these two processes are actually 100% related to each other. They feed each other. One is going to be the reactants of the products of the other. Thank you very much.